In this video, you're going to learn five key tips on how to impress during a technical interview. According to Kyle, tech YouTuber, senior software engineer, and hiring manager, I recently welcomed Kyle onto my live stream here on the Scrimba YouTube channel, where we chatted about topics such as interview preparation, how to optimize your GitHub profile, and even what to do if you don't know the answer to a question. Here are the main takeaways. I hope you enjoy. How can we prepare for a technical interview? This is actually kind of similar to how I would say to prepare for writing like a cover letter too. We'll kind of, kind of cover two birds with one stone here. Every job that you're applying to is very specific, right? They have very specific mm. needs. They have a very specific stack. Even though two titles might be similar, really dig into that job description because quite frequently they're not actually that similar. They're, they're going to be working on different aspects of different projects and things like that. There might be a lot of commonalities which you can prepare for, but to really prepare for that technical interview and to, to aid it in my opinion you can kind of cater yourself to who you're speaking to so if you're lucky and hopefully if it's a good description they will tell you first of all what stacks they're working with so is this a uh, you know is this a node.js stack and then if so um you know what are we talking about is this a, is if, it, if it's a front-end job are we talking react or are we talking vue.js uh and you being prepared for the right technology uh will give you such a competitive mm -hmm. edge in that interview. It, it'll be great if it lines up for you, but you can do yourself a favor and do yourself uh, some homework if you're not already intimately familiar and get yourself familiar. In fact, the company that I work for, for instance, uh, it's not incredibly uncommon for someone not to have the deepest knowledge of Docker, um, though it is extremely important at our company and it is one of the uh, required technology skills that we have listed. So we will be asking questions about Docker and making sure that you have a surface level knowledge. If you were to come in not really knowing anything about Docker when it's listed, that might not look the the best. So mm. you know, really take a look at that description and and cater your responses. Study for it like a test. You have the questions in front of you. Let's talk a little bit about common tech interview topics. The base skills are, are so critical, especially things that people seem to maybe look over sometimes. Your basic Git operations mm. is so huge, especially with new developers who maybe haven't worked with teams before. Depending on your level of Git skill, whether you've used Git at all, I mean, if you have not used Git, certainly something you want to look into, start using version control systems to uh, keep branches of your code intact, in but there's levels to that as well. Uh, using it entirely on your own, super great, but getting involved with other developers is the other half of that. So what they're going to ask in these interviews is, have you had experience working on a project inversion control system with other developers? And that's going to be, do you know, and let's go over a few things here, semantic commit messages or conventional commit messages. That's a, that's a technique to writing a commit message that's common in development worlds. That's one way to do it. They might just ask how do you write a commit message? And then you can respond back, you know, do you write back, hopefully it's fixed this time, I really hope so. Or <laughs> do you write back, you know, fix, added, you know, this new patch, blah, blah, blah. As well as like, how do you uh, merge a pull request? How are you releasing a new version of your software. So it's all these Git based operations that are very, very common if you've worked with teams, but may, maybe you aren't yet familiar with if you've worked alone. Any advice on what to showcase on one's GitHub profile when applying for jobs? Should you have everything out there? Or what should you do? First of all, the number of things is not super important, but you can pin repositories to your uh, GitHub profile. So if you were to go to mine, for instance, you'll see there's like four or five pinned repos up there. And those are the ones that I want people to look at. Otherwise, I have hundreds in there. And it's not because I work on hundreds of things. It's because I fork things for work. And, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with me. But my repos, the ones that I actually <laughs> pin. So you can see there, like uh, at CircleCI, I've pinned a lot of stuff that I work on there, like oh. the Slack Orb. I have um, the Splat Lab Aquarium is a little uh, TypeScript fish aquarium. What you want to show is, is certainly, I mean, you're describing yourself, right? So you, you are showcasing what type of uh, stuff you work on. A few things to point out here. Some of the things you can see here, first of all, is what languages I work with very frequently. So when, with these yeah. pinned projects, you can see Shell is there. You can see yeah. HTML is there. You can see TypeScript is there. You can see JavaScript is there. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can get a quick sense of the languages that I frequently work with, but also you can see the number of stars and forks and things like that. So that shows like the popularity of the project, right? So the mm -hmm. ones that are under my account are maybe a little bit more impressive if they're more popular, but um, I also, also work you know very heavily in another organization so you can see there you know circle ci public 
uh, is the organization of my employer. So this example shows one that I work with a large organization, two that I, I work on uh, a project that is used by lots of people, that's interacted with by lots of people. And these are, you know, th that's the type of thing you're trying to show an employer. One is that, you know, you, you do work and two, that you're working with lots of other folks. So if you can build something on your own that then gets used, that's impressive, right? If you can build a, if you're a UI, we were saying before, if you're a front end developer, if you can build a small UI component library and then, you know, go post that on uh, Hacker News and, and, and Reddit and, and get some people to tweet about it and uh, start using your UI, you know, Tailwind CSS, um, you know, that guy just made that. It sounds a little too easy when I say it like that, but you can build a small little tool and build a community around it, get people interacting with you. Or if you can't, then you can join someone else's community and start building and working on their tool. And then what you can do is showcase the work that you've done here through those those pinned repos. That's what I would recommend. I've only noticed it recently, <laughs> people making um, shiny readme's on their GitHub. And I think it looks very nice. So it's maybe something to bear in mind as well. What's the best way to reply to a question on a skill for which you don't have much knowledge? The best thing you can do is, you know, show that you have an interest in learning. If you've already looked into it at all, that'd be great. You can say like, hey, I know this and that. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty interested in it. And here's like the, the, the ways that I think I could improve uh, moving forward, especially if it seems like it's important to the role, right? But that's always my go-to. It's not, uh, you don't know it, it's you don't know it yet. You have a passion for understanding more about it and, and you hope to gain that knowledge in that role. What's your opinion on solving an interview question as you first seem fit and then refactoring the code when you get to the solution? as opposed to obsessing over finding the perfect answer in the first run. Is there a method that hiring managers prefer? First of all, it's great that you go back and optimize it in the first place. I would see that as a plus, right? And not only would I see that as a, I might even see that better than writing it good the first time because you showed me the opportunity of where you noticed that there was something that could be improved and then mm. fixed it. And that's a really cool thing for me to see. Right. And that's something I might not have seen if you didn't do that in the first place. But I will say um, something that you could do, you know, to help hopefully uh, get you to that more performance answer in the first place and, it and would still help uh, see these things is partially test driven development. So if you can kind of scope out the functionality you need before starting to code, I think you'll be able to find some of these answers. But there's also like the pseudocode and the planning and things like that. So if you were to sketch something out first and then start coding, I think you might end up at a better answer first. The point is, in both of these scenarios, I'm still seeing your thought process that lets you arrive to the best solution, you might only be able to improve that a little bit by saving time, by not coding it less optimal the first time. But again, I, I, I wouldn't take off any points if I saw this. If I saw you code the solution and then I saw you resolve the solution, that's an A plus in my book. I think you did a great job. That's it for my top five tech interview tips from Kyle. I hope they help you out in your job hunt. Let me know which was your favorite tip in the comments below. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more top tips videos just like this one. See you next time.